love being reminded of lost opportunities of the past? Yeah, me neither. Do you dream of a tomorrow that's both broken and confusing? Yeah, me neither. Let's do a walking tour of Tomorrowland's graveyard here at Disneyland and then contrast it with the more active version out at Magic Kingdom. It didn't have to be this way and somehow it is. This is the superior version of Tomorrowland if Disney just wouldn't give up on it. I had no idea how bad Disneyland's Tomorrowland was until I went to Walt Disney World. And oh boy, was I in for a shock. Right out of the gate, when you enter into Tomorrowland from Disneyland's hub, it's already a mess and you haven't even stepped foot in it yet. It's very confusing. Left or right, which way am I supposed to go? versus just head down, eye on the prize, a promise of a better tomorrow, you're already left with decisions to make right out of the gate. And you know what goes against crowd flow? Confusion. When you confuse people, you lose people. And this version of Tomorrowland instantly confuses people on which way are they supposed to go. And that's not how people flow. The first promise we get to look at tomorrow is an over-glorified carnival style attraction. And not only is it visually a disappointment, but we know that there is a better application for Astro Orbiter, not only as we'll see at Walt Disney World, but here once at Disneyland. Every Disney fan knows about sight lines, but let's talk about height lines. What do you see when you look up into Tomorrowland at Disneyland? And what are you treated with when you look up at Magic Kingdom? At Magic Kingdom, we find Astro Orbiter in its proper location. And we know this because it was once the location at home in Disneyland. Now the beauty of Astro Orbiter's location at Magic Kingdom is that it creates a hub instead of an obstacle, allowing people to walk around it in a generous pathway instead of immediately having to make a decision of left or right. Not only does this create great sight lines, but it also creates great height lines to wherever you look up, you see the Astro Orbiter zooming around you, creating that kinetic energy that is the vision of Tomorrowland that somehow has been lost in translation at home in Disneyland. So the beauty of this is as you walk through Magic Kingdom and you look up, you're treated with motion, people having fun, and a promise of an adventure where, uh, having a hard time finding that right now. Unlike the dead version of Astro Orbiter behind me, where you're not seeing any movement, you're just seeing a memory of better times. Not exactly the perfect height line or sight line, if you ask me. Which essentially brings us to tomorrow's graveyard, where all around us, we have dead attractions just sitting here haunting us, reminding us of what once was of good times that people used to have inside of the park. But for some of us, also a reminder of how much more alive Magic Kingdom is because all of these things are still making their daily rotations, telling stories and taking guests on adventures that take them into a promise of a version of tomorrow. Our Astro Orbiter completely dead, no longer creating energy or an icon, but also as we spin around directly across from it, we have another graveyard attraction. The Carousel of Progress here makes zero progress every single day. And although it's now kind of a nostalgic type version of looking at tomorrow, at least at the Magic Kingdom, we get to see it periodically make those spins creating a sense of motion, and when it perfectly aligns with the people mover going over the top of it, now that looks like the type of city in the future, some magical future that I would love to live in, versus here when we stand in between two headstones in the graveyard of tomorrow. Outdated or nostalgic, that's up to you, but shouldn't you have the chance to take that vote, to cast your opinion, on whether you love this attraction, despise this attraction, but wouldn't it just be nice to have an attraction? And even if you don't walk in it, seeing it spin and go around just lets you know that there is something happening in tomorrow. Friends, if you're a DVC member, you can get inside our Carousel of Progress 
where they serve soda, coffee, treats, and snacks, a place to rest your feet, and maybe a pitch to a timeshare to one of your buds that you take up there with you. Now that's tomorrow. And then there's the sad, sad story of the people mover. Nearly everywhere you look in Tomorrowland is a ghost haunting you from a better past, reminding you of your dead present. Where we should be able to ride alongside the people mover and all over Tomorrowland with the best views possible. And I mean possible. If the people mover were still taking guests around the park on its path, it would make the entire land feel alive instead of feeling like it's haunted from memories of its past. And the crazy thing about the Disneyland people mover is it's literally everywhere you look is a reminder of what you no longer have, but what once was. And when you're at the Magic Kingdom, everywhere you look, there's a reminder of people having a good time, people getting the best view, and sometimes those people are you. The saddest part about the Disneyland graveyard is it doesn't have to be this way. Disneyland, arguably, is the far superior layout if it were still alive. No questions asked. This place should be buzzing and alive, and instead, it's a relic graveyard of the past where everything constantly reminds you of how good it used to be and how bad it is now. I interrupt this sorrow land update to let you know now is a perfect chance to subscribe to Hey Bricky so we can track the destruction of Tomorrowland together and celebrate the wins when I return out to Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom and celebrate a Tomorrowland that is alive. One way or another, something's gonna change here and we're gonna see it change together by subscribing and joining me on my journey, which is Hey Bricky. Thank you so much for joining me. Now back to our coverage of Sorrowland and the graveyard at Disneyland. Disneyland's Tomorrowland doesn't need to be such a missed opportunity. The Utopia at Disneyland is miles and miles way better than the Tomorrowland Speedway. It has a scenic, more adventurous path, taking you into the woods, around the water, on all kinds of different overpasses and underpasses. It truly is an adventurous ride when you compare the two. And showing the potential of kinetic energy at Disneyland, it's woven in and around three other attractions. One of the few attractions that Disneyland still has over Magic Kingdom is our submarine lagoon. This attraction no longer exists out east, but it's still alive and well in the west, not only offering you a unique attraction, but unique views from the monorail or just walking by. And not to mention, this land also uniquely has a monorail riding through it. God bless the monorail and all of its beautiful views and the kinetic energy that it brings to Disneyland. These are two subtle ways where this particular version of Tomorrowland should be the best version. However, something has happened along the way to where that is no longer the case. But one could make an argument that having the subs still here, still alive, adds that little bit of extra kinetic energy and that the way that the subs weave around not only the monorail as well as Utopia with shots of Matterhorn Mountain to the back, it is truly a Disneyland classic. If you're wondering why this kinetic energy no longer happens at Disney parks, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you watch this video in the card where I break down the death of kinetic energy and how this area had everything to do with it. In 1959, Walt got very, very ambitious with the extension of Tomorrowland because the original version just wasn't up to his own standards. And if that wasn't up to his standards, can you only imagine what he would have thought of this version of Tomorrowland. But in Walt's ambition, he decided to boldly put the monorail inside of Disneyland, something that we haven't seen repeated and something that I believe ultimately was a mistake to our advantage. Adding to the unique, rich history that Disneyland has that should be more celebrated and taken advantage of because something like this will probably never happen again. And it's a shame that it's not more taken advantage of because Disneyland offers such unique perspectives in the theme park design and into the eye of Walt Disney. 
creative genius in what he created here with the Disneyland masterpiece. And when I say a mistake, I mean a logistical sort of nightmare for Disneyland, but a blessing for Disneyland fans, which is why I would love to see all of this in pristine condition because this was the man's vision. Well, a skeleton of his vision still exists in here somewhere, but it is very, very hard to find in the current status of disarray and disrepair. The graveyard of Tomorrowland is a real thing. Thought it would be interesting to look at Magic Kingdom's version, contrast it with our version, because when I walked through the front gates of Magic Kingdom and I went to their Tomorrowland, it was the first time that I ever felt Disney excitement and joy in a Tomorrowland. But it's so strange because Disneyland has the far superior Tomorrowland layout. This Tomorrowland is a blessing of its small footprint, which had so many design decisions that Imagineering had to make to fit it all in the tight nook, which is Anaheim. But because of its constant state of neglect, it feels inferior nearly in every single way. And even when you focus on the pieces that it has over the Magic Kingdom, it's hard to get too excited just because everywhere you look, there is a reminder somewhere when you see that gold rail of the people mover, that it's no longer moving people, it's no longer making dreams happen. It didn't have to be this way, and somehow it is. This is the superior version of Tomorrowland if Disney just wouldn't give up on it. And friends, when you step into the Magic Kingdom, you feel the life that is their version of Tomorrowland. You feel all of the energy, all of the sight lines. It's all there for you to celebrate. And strangely, when I'm at the Magic Kingdom, it is the land that I spend most of my time in. Just because it's so refreshing to feel Walt's presence, to feel it alive, to feel what should be. Because I know what an honor and a blessing it is to be able to get a look from the people mover, because I can't do that at home. And then when I come back home, to Disneyland, I take a walk through our version of Tomorrowland, and the sadness comes back to me again when I'm reminded at just how far it has slipped, where more items are dead than alive, and officially it appears that Disney has given up. Friends, if you wanna know why I believe Disney has given up, make sure you watch this video right here where I break down how Disney has gone out of their way to ignore Tomorrowland while putting all of their energy into the western end of the park. Ricky here, wishing you a better Tomorrowland.